All right, everybody. Happy Saturday. Yes, we have college football today. I, for one, am super jacked and tan about it. And then my co-host, David Cohn, former Michigan quarterback is, and former Western Colorado wide receiver, and apparently my brother, Blaine, is, who's <laughs> flexing right who now. You? And not a lot's happening. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> who are you? I don't even know who you are. But very football. excited to bring on Mike Golick, Jr. of the Gojo Show and DraftKings. Our partners over there at DraftKings, uh, they do a great job. You need to go check it out. Uh, Mike, what's up, man? I appreciate you hanging out. No, nice to come through and hang with you guys. I got to get them to upgrade my set like yours. You guys got the right setup. Look, it's you, it's a it's a real emotional time around here. I, they won't let me sleep here, but if they did, you know, <laughs> I, I probably could. But you know, uh, I want to start before I even we talk about you know some of the lines this weekend. You know what you what you think about just some national stuff. I do got to come correct. The kick game is elite, my friend. You, uh, I've I've noticed it when I've seen you. The kick game is elite. I just wanted to throw that your way. I appreciate that. I, uh, I, I've i worked hard at it over the years. It's a passion that up there with my tattoos is probably going to go down as among the bigger wastes of my money humanly possible. But I've done what I can to make sure that if I'm going to spend that kind of money, it's at least going to look good at the same time. Look, we can all respect that. Real recognize real. Like Drake said, you know it's real when you are who you Gotta thought have you shoot were. Game. But speaking about who we thought they were, Nebraska Northwestern in Ireland. Cool story. Scott Frost, I talked about it a little bit during the week. Uh, that dude's seat's about as hot as it gets. What are you expecting from this game? Do you think Nebraska is going to be able to do enough to keep Coach Frost there for another year after he got the Jim Harbaugh treatment? We want some of your money. You need to fire these coaches. And if you don't win, you're fired. Um, I think, unfortunately, for Nebraska, the case is they might be just good enough to where you end up keeping them around. And it's yeah. sort of been what the Jim Harbaugh tenure at Michigan, maybe on a different curve, was graded on. But when you look, we know one of the best predictors going into every season is close games and really close losses in the season prior. And we know Nebraska was the greatest 3-9 and nine team in the history of college football or whatever we thought with them. But I think you're going to have a coordinator in Mark Whipple who certainly – uh, a guy that got a great reputation for what he did with Kenny Pickett last year. Mm -hmm. The quarterback situation's improved. So overall, I, I don't think they're going to blow the doors off many people, but they're definitely going to make life just difficult enough on the decision makers there. Yeah, and it's it's been such a, a rocky tenure there after everybody went nuts when Scott got the job. But this line is at 13. Mm -hmm. The over-under's at 49 and a half. I mean, that over-under's gone down like a pie at an Obesity Anonymous get-together. <laughs> Uh, when you look at these two styles of, of offense, we know Casey Thompson coming over. Like you said, Whipple, he wants to throw it around. They've added Trey Palmer. They added Garcia Castaneda from New Mexico State. They added Marcus Washington from Texas as well. But it seems like Pat Fitzgerald and them are going to try and control the ball. I'm kind of liking the under right now, to be honest. Yeah, I, I listen, especially early in the season, yeah. week zero, I'd take the under for a lot of these teams. You're going to watch teams in new quarter. This is also something I think to watch in the portal era when we've got so many players and teams changing position. This is something to keep in mind with USC, even though there's Caleb Williams and Lincoln Riley with continuity. All this change, I think, is going to make the first few weeks feel like a bit of a rock fight. So I would absolutely be on the under on that. I think that's the only chance Northwestern got. I don't think mm. it's a real chance that Northwestern team, uh, while we know Pat Fitzgerald has built quite an identity there and has, you know, the ultimate job security at that place based on what he's done. That's just a team right now that has fallen well behind what we'd expected from them as a consistent mid-level Big Ten team. Yeah. No, I, I I agree with you there. And and again, Pat Fitzgerald, I got a ton of respect for him. They lost a bunch in the secondary as well from a team that didn't exactly blow the doors off last year. Then another one, I threw out one of my picks uh, earlier this week. Uh, for the Illinois-Wyoming game. I like Illinois minus three in the first quarter. I think Brett Bielema was a really good fit there. I know it ended up kind of getting weird, uh, you know, at Arkansas when he made that move, but they were they maxed out their players last year. That roster was an absolute disaster. I mean, FEMA still sending trailers and food down there trying to clean that up. But when you look at this matchup, Wyoming lost a ton in the transfer portal. They're hoping the transfer quarterback can come in and do something. I think Illinois may have a decent year, and I like them big in this game. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Illinois is one of my favorite chaos agents in college football. Yeah. They were a part of that nine overtime absolute affront to God and nature last year. So <laughs> I, 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 I definitely could see, because you're right, Brett Bielma is one of those coaches too. 
in college football, the most important thing you can have if you're a program that's not going to be one of the members of the upper crust or the elites is have an identity. And we know what it is. Brett Bielma's identity has been consistent across the years, across the uh, across his different stops along the way. And if you give him some time to build into that, you're going to do, I think, what raises the floor as easy as anything in the Big Ten. And that's build along the lines of scrimmage where you know he wants to live. Very true. Mike, let me start here. When were you at Notre Dame? Uh, 2008 to 2012. Nice. Okay, so we would have played each other in 08 and 09 then. Nice. When I was Y'all okay? Basically. Everything cool? We're okay. Cool. Yeah, well, one and one, I think. Okay. One and right, one. That's cool. Yeah, Look, shake hands yeah. and walk away. Not a lot of good things to look at from the Rich Rodriguez era when I was there. So, you know, one win over Notre Dame our senior year. I'm proud of you. There you go. I'm, pr- I'm proud of you, man. I appreciate um, Well, let's look at that. Look, I'm ecstatic for week zero football games, but since we have you on, we're not playing. We can look ahead to week one. Irish, look, Marcus Freeman is recruiting well. Congratulations. You get to go to the horseshoe game one. <laughs> I think that line is 17 points right now. What do you expect realistically from the Irish playing the Buckeyes? Uh, I, I think they want to play this thing real close to the vest and go ground and pound. They want to look to land body shots because if you want to just stand up and trade blows to the face with Ohio State, it's not going to work out very well. Ohio State's bringing back essentially an NFL offense. Mm. Jackson Smith and Jigba was the best wide receiver in a room that had two first rounders last year. And we've seen what CJ Stroud became after overcoming some early season doubts from people. They made great hires in the offseason with Justin Fry, their O-line coach, and we've all talked about Jim Knowles on defense. So I think for Notre Dame, the key is going to be while you're figuring out what the situation looks like at quarterback Tyler Buckner gets the starting nod you saw him last year a bunch as the dual threat change up when Jack Cohn mm-hmm. and that offense were stalling out the beginning of the season that coupled with I think a really thin wide receiver room that's been hurt by injury Avery Davis one of their captains lost for the year and an offensive line that guys I, I firmly believe Harry Heastan, the offensive line coach, who was the one that groomed the likes of Zach Martin, Quentin Nelson, Ronnie Stanley, Mike McGlinchey, is back in South Bend with a unit that was injured last year and had a bunch of young, talented guys have to play probably sooner than they expected. I think all of that makes them probably what will be one of the two or three most improved units this fall. So you couple that with a defensive product that's, I think, been pretty consistent over the last five, six years for Notre Dame, and you're going to have a team that's going to try and take the air out of the football. Think that Alabama-Notre Dame playoff game from a couple of years ago. Yeah, Yeah, it should be a lot of fun to watch. Let's bounce back to week zero here. Vanderbilt at Hawaii. That line is plus eight and a half right now. Hawaii, I I don't know, just over a touchdown, it it seems interesting to me when Vanderbilt has to go all the way to Hawaii. Uh, What what do you think there in that game? Can, uh, Can Vanderbilt cover that? I think so. And we know for the Commodores, the last year has been a weird mix of quarterback swapping that's gone on. The two guys that they've tried to cycle through there, Clark Lee, really on the offensive side of the ball, has dealt with the biggest problem that usually starts with teams. And we saw this last year, even with all South Carolina success, when you come to the SEC, If you don't have the bodies to play up front on the offensive line the way that they didn't, you're usually going to have a bad time. I I think for Vanderbilt, we know they're going out there plenty early because, man, if you're Vandy, you're probably not going bowling this year. So treat this trip to Hawaii like that. Let the best part of your season be in the first (laughs) week when you get to go out and enjoy a little bit of that Hawaiian loving. But I I do think for Clark, you're going to see that second year of the program. Really smart coach. I, I obviously have a lot of familiarity from him with his time at Notre Dame. And I think defensively, that's a group that's going to have another defined identity. If Clark Lee can get you to third down, it's going to be painful. That man throws galaxy brain stuff at you from mm. every direction. And I think for a Hawaii program that's certainly in transition and is far from what we all remember from Pat, you know, Hawaii after dark and chasing late night overs on the back end of a college football weekend, I, I think for them, Vanderbilt's got a good shot to go out here and set a physical tone on the road to start the season. I don't think it transfers over into the SEC all that well, mm. but I think it can get them a good win week one. He almost had me hyped for Vandy. Yeah, man. I know, right? Well, <laughs> <he> <laughs> I, I, I do want to ask, I, I know, Blaine, speaking of Vanderbilt, and we've talked about this on the show, I am a firm believer in Vanderbilt needs to run the triple option. I will keep screaming oh, it. I will yes. keep yelling it. Look, I know I know that I know they're, they had a great offensive lineman, the, the Osteen kid that went to Bama. I know they returned some guys that are good, but just overall, when you look at it, the triple option, bring Paul Johnson. Yeah, if it Paul doesn't work Johnson out with Clark Lee, and again, yeah. I hope it does. I know Clark Lee's a great guy, uh, but bring Paul Johnson over there and just get weird. Be different. You know what I'm saying? Just be a little different, but that's just me. I, I, I always enjoy that from the full cast crew. It is a great idea that I think needs to be adopted. 
adopted more is if you're going to be bad, man, at least be fun. He's going to recruit linemen. To be. He's going to recruit linemen. Yeah. It's a whole easier to do everything when you've got the weird. If you want to be the one that goes all in on the weird thing, whatever your weird thing is, and the triple is a good weird thing, it's proven well over history, do that. Do something fun. Yeah, if you're going to be Steven Glansberg, go all in, man. If you're going to eat pudding by yourself at the lunch table, run the triple option. I didn't think we'd get to a Steven Glansberg. Oh, we're definitely going to get get that. One game I'm interested in is Cincinnati and Arkansas. Spread right now is Arkansas minus six and a half. Arkansas, bring it back KJ Jefferson. You get Catalan back at safety. Bumper pull a linebacker. I mean, you look at Cincinnati, you lose Desmond Ritter, you lose Sauce Gardner. What's your uh, what's your expectations of that game? And do you think Arkansas can cover that six and a half? I, I do. I, I think Arkansas is going to set a strong tone that game. Luke Fickle's done a phenomenal job with that program, but the hardest part of being a school in the group of five, especially in Ohio, where I know they're competing at a higher level. They're getting ready for the Big 12 mood. They went to the playoff last year, but you're re- replacing the generational talent that helped lift your program to this level at quarterback and not just sauce Gardner, but his counterpart on the other side, Kobe Bryant, Brian cooks, their safety. Who's going to be a a good guy in the NFL. You lost essentially an NFL secondary in one year. And that allows you to do so much on this team. Malik van and some of those other guys up front are good quality players, but overall this Arkansas team, I don't know if it's ever going to ascend to the heights that I want it to. Sam Pittman, the O-line coach, is someone I will always support. And we saw the fun they had last year. But again, identity, big physical quarterback in K.J. Jefferson, who may have a future on Sunday, we'll see. But for now in college, is an absolute problem that defenses have to account for. I love it. All right, Oregon versus Georgia. A couple of weeks ago, I came out and said <laughs> Oregon was going to beat Georgia. I think it's a 17-and-a-half point spread. I know uh, bowl strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> but is there going to be any hangover after the national championship for Georgia week one? I know you bring back Stetson Bennett, but you lost basically the the, the best defense ever to walk on a college football field. Do you think Georgia, uh, Oregon can maybe, just maybe, squeeze that one out? No. <laughs> I, I, I do think there is, some, there is some interesting things to consider. Obviously, Dan Lanning's got a ton of familiarity with what's going to go mm-hmm. on in that Georgia defense. You do lose the all-everything guys. You lose Jordan, Jordan Davis and Kobe Bean, who are, the, who are the backbone of that defense. And then you bring back in Jalen Carter, who's probably going to be a top-five pick this year yeah. amongst a number of other players. Like the depth, I did their game against Cincinnati in the Peach Bowl two years ago, and when you look down the depth chart and just see five-star backing up five-star, mm-hmm. backing up five-star on the scout team, it's like looking at the damn O one one Miami roster. So yeah. I, I don't think there'll be a hangover, but I think that offense is going to have to probably pull more of its weight than it did last season. They were basically handed the ball in plus territory, what felt like every time they were bailed out by a defense that was a true steel curtain. And so now... You've got an offense that's got Brock Bowers, and we'll sort of wait to see what you can do in that that passing game. But there's no more quarterback controversy. There's not going to be people calling for Stetson Bennett's head every week like we did last year when JT Daniels was there. So I I think they're going to still be one of the few teams in true playoff contention, but it's going to have to look a little different because I don't think you can count on the greatest defense in history twice. Yeah, without a doubt. We're here at Mike Golick Jr. Just got a couple more for you, my friend. Heisman odds, looking at DraftKings right now. Shout out to the King. Got CJ Stroud, plus 220. Bryce Young, plus 380. Caleb Williams coming in at a smooth uh, plus 700. And Will Anderson Jr. at plus 1600. Now, I'm of the firm belief, and I'm a defensive guy, Mike. There's no way in hell they are going to let a defensive player win the Heisman. Me and Cone had a nice little back and forth on that earlier this week. Do you think there is a chance, even a small one, that the voters outside of Mad Dog will vote in a defensive player to win the Heisman. <laughs> and God love Mad Dog for doing it. Um, man, so I, I played in college with a linebacker who finished second in the Heisman voting. We saw last year a defensive end finish second in the Heisman voting. That wasn't even Will Anderson. You can go down the list and find not a single stat that – Aiden Hutchinson outperformed Will Anderson and other than the visibility of Michigan's program during the course of a special season. And even that wasn't fully enough. So I doubt it, to be honest. We're going to be looking longingly at Bryce Young to see if he can repeat. Stroud in Ohio State is certainly going to have the offensive tools and the team success that's likely to put you in that conversation. But, man, I just don't know how much better you can be than what Will Anderson was last year. We know Dallas Turner on the other side now is going to put people in a real bind and maybe 
maybe that allows him to even get gaudier sack numbers and allows those kind of things to bolster his campaign. We know Alabama, in Nick Saban's words, was busy reloading and doing whatever the hell that was last year, <laughs> only finding their way to the SEC championship in the playoff. But I, I, I do think that he'll have the environment for it. But unfortunately, or really fortunately for college football, we've got the QB firepower to probably make that a non-starter. Man, I, I could not agree with you more. I, I picked Stroud a couple months ago. I'm going to stick with it, especially with the weapons they have on the outside. Like I've said, they got more than Ukraine right now if you really look at it. But if you're picking a sleeper, Mike, to make the college football playoff, uh, a lot of us are, are going pretty much chalk. I think Oklahoma has a chance, uh, but I still feel like now that Sam Hartman's out at Wake, I got Clemson, I've got Bama, uh, I've got Georgia and Ohio State. Is there anybody maybe on the periphery that you're looking at right now that could be a little sneaky? I think Utah is fascinating this season. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm on the I'm on the road calling that game for Learfield Radio week nice. one when they roll into Gainesville at Florida. And I just think you look at the way that team finished last year. Gives you big time like 2017 USC vibes where they waddle in anonymity the first couple weeks of the season. They're like one and two. They make a quarterback change. Cam Rising gets in there and all of a sudden the offense starts to pick up. They can bully people a little bit. Yep. Kyle Whittingham's got that identity built in the trenches and really the defensive backfield on both sides of the ball. And with them thrashing Oregon twice at the end of last season, you walk in already with some with those accomplishments. You have a chance for a marquee out of conference win in week one. And then you host a USC team that's in transition on your home field. And your toughest road game is going to be Oregon late in the season. But still, you walk in there with a decided mental edge based on how you handled them last year. So I think Utah is definitely a team that's earned the right to be in this conversation. Mm-hmm. No, I, I'm with you. I got them going 9 0 in the Pac 12, but right now losing that game to Florida. And I have them beating Florida uh, yeah, and then I, maybe running the Pac 12. Yeah, Oregon, that's, Oregon. that's exactly right. Oregon, but, this guy. Yeah, jeez, please. Oh, man. In, betting, on, betting with Bo Nix, man. I am. He's I hope you take your heart. I hope you take your heart medication oh, no, he's all focused. year long. <laughs> Believe me, oh, no, we're from fun, Auburn, so we fun. know. He's, and he's a dark yeah, horse. Bo Nix and Gus Malzahn took a combined eight years off my life. I could eat donuts for the next 30 years with chocolate all over them and not be nearly as near death as what they've put me so many times. You, you guys want to talk about do the fun thing here? I think every team in college football should have to have Bo Nix for a year. Because you're going to get some great stuff and you're going to get some really exciting stuff. And then you're going to have games where it's like when you hit a golf ball off the tee and the divot goes in front and the ball shoots back. You weren't sure that was possible. <laughs> I've done it. That's kind of the Bo Nix experience. Yeah, and yeah, it's not a true. fumble. And you know who we call a guy that's played for every team? Tate Martell. That'll be the only joke I make <laughs> about Tate Martell. But uh, yeah, MGJ, I appreciate you, my friend. Tell everybody where they can find your great content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Make sure you download, subscribe, rate, and review Gojo wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, You can check us out there, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those fun spots. We also are now having the episodes put up on YouTube. You can head over to the DraftKings YouTube page, check out the Gojo with Mike Golick Jr. playlist on there, and we'll have all our videos Plenty of uh, full episodes there, clips there, and as I get on the road for college football season, I'm sure plenty of other stuff that's going to find its way in. Definitely, man. Well, football's back, baby, and yes, I can't sir. be more excited. Appreciate you joining us. Thanks, guys. All right. Make sure you guys like and subscribe this video. Check us out on all social media platforms. Y'all know what's up. Got some more great stuff coming and some big announcements. Enjoy your football. Sit back, drink a cold one, and eat something hot.